I would like to acknowledge that this video is being filmed on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past and present, and extend that respect to any Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or First Nations people who may be watching this video today. Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner, and welcome to a Books Beside My Bed video. If you're new here I film one of these videos every week where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading and for anyone who is very familiar with the series welcome back. This is my reading week from the 6th until the 11th of March. I read a total of seven things this week some of which were included in my recent seven hour reading vlog which I will leave linked on the screen but I will very briefly touch on the books that I read in that video in this one as well. I read a total of 1781 pages and my yearly reading total is 114 books. So I'm dubbing this week my rereads and backlist reading week just because that's mostly what I read outside of the reading vlog. And I was very tired this week and I needed to read things that I was either really really excited to read which were my rereads and I tried to balance that out with some things that I just needed to read off my physical TBR that I was also excited about but have probably been putting off. In the reading vlog that I shared earlier last week I read three things. The first was So Sweet by Rebecca Weatherspoon which is the first book in a series and I've just mentally blanked on what the series is called. This is a sugar daddy romance story and honestly if you've seen the video it was fun but it didn't really do anything for me. You have Kayla and Michael and they end up meeting at an event for an online sugar daddy app and they hit it off and then they have to begin to try and explain their relationship to the people that that care about them and there's some other things that go on in the story but if you want more information go and check out the vlog because I give my immediate reaction and by the time I got to the end of the week I'd pushed a lot of the details out of my head. Unfortunately it just wasn't my favourite Rebecca Weatherspoon book. In that video I also read Dance All Night which is by Alexis Daria in his book 2.5 in her Dance Off series and I really like this series. I've only read book one and this one and I'm still trying to find book two and I can't find it anywhere so... I'm gonna keep looking. This one is about Nick and Jess. They're both dancers. Jess is a ballroom dancer. Nick does Broadway dancing mostly and the two meet at an event. They're connected by Nick's brother who was on the dance-off show that Jess was starring in. They meet on New Year's Eve, they kiss on New Year's Eve and then Nick disappears and Jess doesn't see him for the majority of the following year and then they reconnect the following Christmas and they haven't been able to stop thinking about each other and even though Jess is very concerned about the fact that Nick left her and that was sort of the end of their first and only encounter, Nick persuades her to give him three chances and three Christmas themed dates to make it work. So this one is not without its little dramas but it was really fun and I love the world that Alexis Daria has brought up and there's plenty of really cute dancing scenes in here as well. And then the final book that I read in that reading vlog was Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is the second and final book in the Bellinger Sisters series or duet I suppose and this is about Hannah who had followed her sister to a small fishing town in the first book and then when her sister settled down and had her partner she went back to her life in the city and she works in film and she has dreams of becoming a musical soundtrack person. I've forgotten the, I've forgotten the exact term. Anyway she wants to work in the music side of the film industry and at the start of this book the film that she's currently working on gives her the opportunity to suggest the small fishing town as the ideal filming location for it so that gives her an excuse to go back and she ends up sharing a house with Fox who was someone that she met the first time she was in town she got along really well with that they, they shared a love of music and Fox has a reputation as being the town playboy. They had an attraction but they kind of ignored it this really gives them that forced proximity opportunity and moment where they are forced to confront their feelings and the one thing that I really loved about this book because this book was unexpectedly emotional for me and that had to do with the way that Nick had been raised to perceive himself in a particular way and so this book really deals with a lot to do with toxic masculinity and how Fox has been raised to believe that he's expected to behave in a particular way and he's followed through with that and yes we can talk about how you know everyone has a choice and all that sort of thing but when everyone is constantly telling you that you are this kind of person and this is how you are going to behave then that is incredibly damaging to a person and he is trying to work through that in this book and yeah like it was unexpectedly emotional because Fox and Hannah want to make this work but you know they're they're being stopped by their own baggage really 
and I just I loved the way it all came together in the end so it was great I liked hook line and sinker more than I liked it happened one summer for sure it was amazing all right and then we come into the extra books that I read this week so I picked up a couple of books off my TBR cart challenge where I'm trying to read through the books alphabetically so I read The Edge of 13 by Nova Wheatman. This is an Australian middle grade title. It is about a girl called Clem. She's in year eight. So she is 13 slash 14 years old. And all around her, all of her friends are beginning to develop. So her friends are getting their period and they're getting boyfriends and they're interested in slightly different things. Whereas she is not quite at that stage of development yet. And this all comes to a head when she is on the year eight camp. They're out in the bush and she begins to have trouble with her friendship group. She's got two great best friends, but she's feeling so separate and different from them now. And then she meets a new friend and then, you know, that causes complications with her long term friends. And she's dealing with, you know, what do you do around boys? And are you supposed to feel or act a particular way around boys? So it's a very good read. Definitely great for that middle grade reader who is moving into high school or is at this stage of development and is really finding things frustrating. So well worth checking out. Then I needed something fun and funny to just sort of regroup because it, there were some days this week that were interesting and I needed short, funny and entertaining. And so for me, that meant going back to a reread and I reread Smash and Grab by Mads Maddox. This is an MM romance with dinosaur shifters. I've talked about this book plenty. You have Dalton, who is a Utah Raptor shifter and he has a bright pink mohawk, he has boundless energy, and he just bounces around from one thing to another in this story, and he ends up rescuing Simon, who is a paleontologist who has uncovered something that is trying to be stolen. Dalton wants to steal it, but to give it back to the traditional owners of the artifact, and he ends up taking Simon with him as they go across the country. You have a road trip, you have an only one bed situation, you have weird wacky side trips as they break into dinosaur parks and all sorts of things. And it is honestly delightful and it gave me so much joy and it's what I needed around Tuesday because Tuesday was a day. After that I went back to my TBR cart and I finally read Latsue by Darcy Little Badger and I'm so glad that I did. This is a young adult urban fantasy paranormal type story and you have Ellie or Latsue who is a young Native American girl who has the ability to see ghosts or interact with them or bring them back. We meet her as she's playing with her ghost dog Kirby and he hangs around with her and she can call him to her and other people can see Kirby with a little bit of effort from Ellie's part, but it is well known within her family and as part of their traditions that the first or the oldest child in every generation will have this ability. And we then find out, or then Ellie finds out that her cousin has been killed and he comes to her as a ghost and asks her to find out what happened. He is a little bit older, he's married and has a young son. And so Ellie and her family and her best friend Jay begin to investigate this murder. And it was honestly very atmospheric, very fun. Like it's a very easy read, but it is so impactful. And I don't know a lot about Native American traditions, but reading this and seeing the way that a lot of ideas have been blended into this very urban fantasy world was just amazing so highly recommend and then i ended the week because i'm currently filming another vlog so i finished on thursday this week by rereading blood air which is the next book that i'm reading with megan and heather for our alona andrews read along i will probably reread this closer to the live show which is next month but I wanted to just pick it up because I've been dying to do that. Tabbed it this time and I just had the best time. So this is the first book in the spin-off series from the Kate Daniels world. This is the Aurelia Ryder series book one and it is Julie's books. Julie is Kate Daniels ward slash adopted daughter from the first series and at the end of the series Julie had left and she'd struck out on her own and now we are eight years in the future and Julie has come back to Atlanta because she's found out that Kate's life is in danger and and she has the power to potentially stop that death from happening. So she comes back to Atlanta, she's got a new mission, she has a new face, no one recognizes her. You know, she ends up crossing paths with all sorts of characters that we met in the first series and it was honestly just so much fun. This of course starts off the return of the Derek and Julie plotline, which I'm actually really looking forward to Heather reading this book because I know exactly how she's gonna to react to it and it's gonna be funny and she's probably going to hate me. I love this. It was fun. I love seeing all of the other characters pop up 
and just be there because this world is honestly just like coming home. It's comforting and I adore it. All right, so those are the books that I read this week. In the comments, I would love to hear what you have been reading or if you've read any of these, feel free to discuss them with me. If you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment, leave the blood drop emoji down below. Blood air deals a lot with blood magics, so we'll go with that. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.